Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to pull in historical FX rates into Google Sheets. You can do this for multiple currencies. I'll also show you how to create a quick template for tracking them and how you can easily adjust your start date and the currencies you wanna track. By making your formulas dynamic, this can be an easy sheet to update. So let's go over how to set this up. So let's start with a simple example here using the Google Finance function in Google Sheets. And let's say I wanna get the FX rate for US dollars versus Canadian. So in this case, I'm just going to type in USD CAD and get that value. So 1.43. So this tells me for one US dollar, I'll get 1.43 Canadian. If I want the inverse of that, I can just change this to CAD USD and I've got that as well. So I'm going to keep this at USD CAD. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is this is the current price. I didn't enter any arguments for it. If I want to pull in historical values, then it's not going to give me um, the current price. It's only going to give me prices as of, or the FX rates as of the end of the day. So until the day, as long as the day is going, we're not going to get the, the current value using the historical. So I'm going to show you how we can do that. So we're still using the Google Finance function. And this time, if you, if you open up this uh, question mark, you'll see the details of the arguments that we're in. So it's technically the, the ticker argument because this is, you can also pull in stocks using this function, but we can still put in USD CAD and it's gonna be able to give us the, the exchange rate. So for the attribute, I'm gonna set it to price. Now for the start date, I can set, um, you know, how far back I wanna go. So let's say January 1, 2024. And for the end date, I'm gonna use the today function and what that's gonna do is return today's date. And so this is really useful because now you don't have to go in and update um, to the current date. It's automatically gonna do that calculation and know what today's date is. So that way it's always gonna be giving you the most recent data. So we've got our start date January 1, 2024. If I hit control down to get to the var bottom of the data set, we can see February 3rd. Now today is February 4th. So I don't have data for the fourth yet, because as you can see, we've got February 3rd, 2025, but we also got a timestamp, 2358. So that tells you almost uh, pretty much the end of the day. So until we get to the end of the day, this is not gonna be updated. So if you wanna track both the current rate as well as the historical, you, you may wanna consider setting up two formulas. One to pull in the current rate, which is just this one right here, where we put in no arguments. And for the historical, we can put in that currency pair and that start date and today. So that's a, a bit of a bitter, bigger formula, but not a whole lot more complicated. But let's make this formula a bit more dynamic so it's easier to update. So I'm gonna insert a, a row above here for my, for my start date. And my start date, I'm just gonna be able to type in January 1, 2024. And the idea being, instead of keying that in manually, we'll always wanna avoid um, hard-coded values whenever possible just to make it easier to update all these formulas. So I'm gonna close this out and just select that value. I'm gonna freeze that using F4. And so now it doesn't change just because the input is the exact the same, still so January 1, 2024. Let's also set my currency as well. So right now I've got USD CAD. So to drag this, I'm gonna actually cut and paste this over here. So let's say we've got the current rate. And let's say I want to type in my currency pair. So let's say USD CAD. And let's just align that. And so now instead of typing this in, I can also just link to that. And again, let's freeze that one as well. So now it's a lot cleaner. We've got a link to the currency pair, the price, and the start date. And so everything that we need to change is right in these inputs. So USD CAD, so if I wanna change that as well, I can just do CAD USD, oops, CAD USD, and it'll update based on that. And I can do the same thing here, get rid of this, and just reference reference this. And this can be helpful because, you know, it can be a lot easier to, to just limit your updating to these few fields and have everything else update accordingly. Now let's say I wanted to track other currencies. It's really easy now to do that because if I wanna, compare against the euro. I can type in USD EUR for euro. If you're not sure what these codes are, you can just go to the Google Finance um, Google Finance page 
and look for what those codes are to get you to give you an idea of what you should be entering for these combinations. So normally it'd be uh, three letters for one currency, three letters for the other. And so like British pounds, we would use USD GBP and now everything updates. So it's really easy to, once you've got this template set up where we've got a placeholder for our date and our currency pair for everything else to update. I can go back to, let's say January 1, 2020, if I wanted to, and it'll go back to there. The only difference is now I've just got more, more fields in here. So the key thing to keep in mind when you're pulling in historical is that current rate is not gonna show up until the end of the day. So it's not really gonna be current actually because there's only going to be a finite window where it's going to be matching up to that that closing. Um, so if you want the current, just use the Google Finance function and use the currency pair. Don't put any other arguments in. If you do want the historicals, then you're going to have to put in a bit more details. But just keep in mind that it's not going to pull in um, the, the current price as of right now. It's not going to pull it in until the actual day is closed. So that's how you can pull in, in different currency pairs and historical currency information into Google Sheets. Really easy to pull it in using the Google Finance function and you just look up the pairs on the Google Finance page. So that's all after this video. If you did like it, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.